Hello folks and welcome to Metal Warney. Today we're here in Weinheim and we're talking to Gal. You constantly evolve and you always mention that stagnation is the worst that can happen to an artist. Mm. However, you change the set list almost every night and add songs from a long, long time ago sometimes. Yeah. How difficult is it for you to relate to the songs that you wrote 10, 20 years ago? Oh, yeah, even even longer. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, the, the oldest song we, we uh, have on this set is 28 years old. So it's um, it was when I first brought it kind of into the idea. Of it uh, started out with this uh, event in Bergen. Um, that was the first show we did, and maybe back in '15. And then I um, uh, thought that okay, I can. Uh, because I've worked with so many different musicians you know, from back in the day, so I, I picked one song from all different uh, yeah. coal workers, basically. Of course, some some on, on several songs, so I kind of had um, yeah six uh, six album tracks, six mm -hmm. uh, Godsey tracks, and then six Golgro track tracks on that show. So. I tell them were never intended to be live. The songs actually are function very, very good live. So, but what I kind of, yeah, well, just uh, entered the rehearsal location and for some reason they just stick. So it's not something that I. Uh, I thought it would be difficult to turn into a 16-year-old again. It's. Uh, it's there. <laughs> so. <laughs> and since you also mentioned that you're not a very social person sometimes, but you're still you're forced to work with others in bands. Yeah. So especially when you write songs, how hard is it to agree with others? Uh, that's usually. I think that's one of the reasons why I'm. Uh, I end up working with usually just one other member. So. I, and of course, they need to uh, put a lot of. Re uh, they need to rely on that I, of course, that I uh, am doing what. Uh, uh, I I'm not good at revealing the complete ideas to my coworkers. I kind of evolve with, without them uh, interfering. In the in the law structures. So is it easier or harder if you've known these people for many years? Mm. I don't know actually. It's um, I don't think I think too much about it when I approach the creative process. Um, but I know know that. I always try to work against what what is obvious. <laughs> uh, so I know uh, I know King were kind of frustrated when, of course, he probably has an idea and then he ships it off to me and and then when I return it to him, it's never the way he predicted. I know. So uh, but, uh, I know with uh, Ula or, or uh, Lost Kilman that I've been working the, the last album with. Uh, He's, yeah, he's enjoying that process. That's okay. He know he know I will do something that he's not expecting, but uh, he know uh, no one trusts that it will be good. So when you when you walk on stage, you seem both very very mentally focused on what's happening around you, but also almost like in a different world. I think that's my state almost always <laughs> so I have I am in my own bubble and, and but I'm of course present as well so I think I'm uh, yeah I have one foot in both realms <laughs> but with art in general and since you also worked as an actor mm. one could say for some it's 
that they get to know themselves through their art and others they kind of see it as a way to escape yeah. and um, <coughs> what is it for you? No, uh, no, for me it's uh, communication with myself I think so, it's definitely not a sp an escape but I, I got to know from uh, when, I, when I worked with uh, acting and actors in general they, they usually use it as an escape but for me it's um, yeah, I have to believe in what I present so it's more of more of a manifestation of of the self rather than uh, escape from it so if that makes sense so yeah it does and I'm, I'm aware that you don't uh, you don't print your lyrics and you don't want people to you don't want to guide them to mm. understand yeah. or to get to I don't even write them down to myself yeah. so so it's Fascinating. Um, had you, uh, did you ever had the feeling that someone completely misunderstood what you wanted to say and that um, it made you really angry, even <laughs> though you always tried not to care? Yeah, it's uh, no. There's a lot of. Uh, um, I I remember uh, I, it was a Danish photographer, tattoo artist, that was releasing a book, and he he asked if it was okay to uh, to have two lyrics, uh, uh, Curving a Giant and uh, and Sign of an Open Eye. And yeah, he, he sent me the script uh, of the book and I have to go, uh, so that's the first time I've <laughs> <laughs> seen how extremely wrong you can interpret it. Oh, okay. But, uh, of course, he, uh, uh, so I I uh, gave him I gave him the words. Oh, so, so, he did. He, okay. so he has to he has printed them and uh, also we I think we also uh, wrote it down on uh, Prosperity and Beauty on this uh, uh, Buck and DVD uh, release thing yeah I think that's but uh, so it was basically me just reading or telling the lyric to uh, to King and he sit, sat there and <laughs> typed it down so it's and there's a couple of options that are, uh, but it's, yeah, uh, but I don't, I don't want people to, I want people to pay attention, rather than, to uh, get everything with a, mm -hmm. uh, be fed with a spoon. It's, yeah. it's, um, for me, it's uh, the self awareness and. Um, it's probably frustrating for the ones, but I, I don't I don't want people to have uh, easy part. If you if you want to uh, get to the top of the mountain, you have to walk the mountain. Mm. It don't take a chopper on top of it, and that's uh, it's not the experience then, that you need to go. All the shortcuts are uh, uh, things I try to avoid. Yeah. But that's what I also enjoy about the the lineup of this tour. That no band is real black metal in a mm. typical sense. But everyone kind of touches it in a way, yeah. and uh, it's really individualistic. Each band mm. to their own, and uh, that's kind of what the black metal scene needs, maybe at uh, the time. Yeah, I think so. It's uh, it used to be very free back in the days and highly individual. With individualistic but at some point it kind of just turned into uh, a very mainstream uh, following but of course there's always been bands that are have been separating but it's uh, uh, but it's this tour is very very uh, a huge variety um, in, in bands Absolutely, I I hadn't heard any of the bands prior. Really? So it's uh, I'm not very good at listening <laughs> to music. <laughs> so so it's but I'm I'm very I'm very glad that uh, all the bands are have their own uh, yeah energy. Have you seen uh, Lots of Chaos, the new film? No. Do you I plan to? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Uh, I'm not much into the American entertainment business. <laughs> okay, understandable. It's, uh, 
there, there's a few uh, few exceptions, of course, but it's but uh, yeah, the American way of telling stories is not necessarily giving me any pleasure. <laughs> Would you ever allow anyone to do a film about you? I've been asked several times about this, even people want, wanting to write books and all this. I'm not uh, that, um, I don't like that focus, so, it's, um, but I've had a lot of offers for, uh, for things like that, yes. Since you're musician, artist, also actor sometimes, how do you decide how much time you invest into what? Ooh, uh, let's see, that's, um, when it comes to acting it's kind of, it just uh, was something I did when I needed to get away from my own creativity in a way. <laughs> so. Uh, just to kind of uh, get a distance from uh, uh, from myself, so um, so I, the acting part has it also st that it steals kind of a lot of energy from uh, because you you limit yourself to to a character um, and also time specters like mm. you if you you have to maintain the exact looks. Like when I did the movie, I weren't allowed to even shave my own beard. Basically, I had to kind of uh, it had to be done by by the people working with. Luckily, it worked uh, within. Uh, it, we recorded everything within uh, three months, I guess. But you all, of course, sign up to a contract where you, in case one year after they have to do a reshoot of something. Oh, okay. So you kind of, you're b bound up to, uh, <laughs> so it's difficult to combine it with, with, uh, uh, with everything, in mind. especially music, to travel around. I, c I can still have a terrible beard when, uh, uh, when I paint, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't go on stage like that, so. So it's, uh, but m musically and, uh, when it comes to art and visual art, I, I usually work uh, with both things, things at the same time. Even mu music and music, it's kind of. I usually have, uh, for some reason, when I first go for one thing, I have seven other things going on at the same time. So. Okay, well. <laughs> so I'm not good at physically juggling, juggling but I'm good at it otherwise. <laughs> So it seems like the. I think also it's. It helps me create the necessary distance to uh, the different projects to kind of have something to put yeah. the head into and then return to it and then uh, so keep, I think it helps me clear my head rather than having to escape. Uh, and just isolate myself. Would you ever force yourself to finish a project? No. Never at all? Never. Then, uh, if you force something, then it's not, uh, uh, yeah. You, you can't force honesty. Okay. You got into art even before you got into music. Yeah. Right. When did this start? Was it already as a child, or did your parents take uh, you to? I think everything starts as a child. No, but I'm not, I've never, I've never, uh, I've never been kind of uh, pushed into. I've basically just done what I've, what I wanted to do. But only on, uh, on, uh, as, a, as a self-taught and not. Uh, I've never gone to any kind of studies or anything f for what I do. Okay. So. But have you ever been pushed into a different direction, like normal job, maybe from your parents or so? No, I I have uh, the best parents in the world, so oh. I've uh, been allowed to become, and so so does my siblings. They, they um, yeah, uh, 
we've had a very free upbringing, and uh, so uh, everyone has chosen their own path. So also with an art? Uh, no, my uh, well, my my uh, younger sister. She's uh, mainly working as a nurse, but she uh, she also do this folk music kind of thing, but you more on a more on a hobby basis. Okay. So uh, yeah, and so it, for them it's more like a hobby than the actual than the actual actual lives. So your album's coming in May. <coughs> yes. <laughs> you already published the first song, and uh, I think it surprised many people. Even though you always expect the unexpected in a way from your music, is the album itself in the same style or very? very Very it, it is um, yeah what what can I say about it it's uh, it is every song could easily be a single and repres uh, be represented as a unique piece but I still feel that the album is really combined and well put together but it's it's many uh, different energies uh, not too many extremes I think musically mm. a lot of them but um, yeah it will be an old boring man's album <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I'm very uh, I'm very pleased with the end result and I allow, I allow myself to go into into things that I'm almost embarrassed about Really? Yes. Did you so actually feel embarrassed about something? Yes. <laughs> uh, but only now and again. Sometimes I, uh, it's just that it, there's some sort of vanity in, <laughs> in, uh, okay. but it's, 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 um, yeah, I like to kind of not necessarily have complete, yeah, I need to put myself off tilt a bit, uh, now and again just to, uh, yeah allow things to be more alive yep. so uh, a bit driving without a seatbelt <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you have to work if you want to keep it interesting yeah. I think for a long time I guess the title is not to be taken very uh, literally however yeah. how did you have any encounter with ghost supernatural events in your life Oh yeah, there's for me ghosts are uh, both ghosts as people see them literally. Or uh, but I, for me, ghosts is also memory. It's it's um, influences. It's so that that's that's why ghosts invited. So it's kind of more. When I started to work on that title, it was was around the music, and I saw certain patterns in in the riffs and and of course you there's so many topics to approach and so I've gone gone into a topic that's followed me from the first days of Trellnum basically and through yeah through my musical career in, uh, but I've kind of narrowed it down and then expanded it within within itself uh, so so uh, That in itself is kind of a ghost, that uh, or a spirit that follow me. But also musically, it's uh, I I could hear kind of the yeah you can hear uh, references to uh, less uh, um, music or what he he if you go with it and what he will put on. Uh, so you, so for me there's. There is already kind of a link to both Tin Lissy and different bands that is also to uh, certain trash elements and so I've and also he has this tendency to sometimes I have to break that up because it it can be a bit frustrating too. He has a tendency to start with the first uh, the first riff and then ends with in, so he kind of goes in mm -hmm. a loop. So it was. All these things combined that uh, made me decide to go into this uh, Gastir Ghosts Invited uh, title because it's there's 
and I worked also uh, also the vocal elements. I allow my I invite different uh, characters into in the to the storytelling, even though it's me being the characters too. So it's uh, there's a lot of small homages to to other artists. Uh, okay. yeah, yeah. Some dead and some still alive, but it's it's not necessarily uh, um, very traceable. But it's it is done consciously because I kind of it's small honors or yeah. to uh, one's uh, uh, yeah what has given pleasure through uh, through life. So. You got me hyped a bit now. I'm really <laughs> curious to hear it. <laughs> uh, just, just recently after the death of Keith Flynn from the Prodigy, etc., the, the topic of suicide appeared in media again. Some people always say it's a weakness. Others, especially in black metal, consider it a privilege to be able to, to end your life when you want it. Mm. How do you think about that? There is a lot of people that struggle with many things. So. Uh, um, I don't, um, yeah, I, I like the freedom of choice, of course, <laughs> and everything, but it, it also affects a lot of others. So, um, I'm not of the suicidal uh, characters myself, but I, I've had a, had a, like one, one of the Trellum drummer, early Trellum drummers, he killed himself, um, and it's just, uh, of, of course, when it's... Um, so I've had a couple of people around me that has chosen to go that direction. But it's... Yeah. Uh, it, it's usually a short-term ter uh, short uh, uh, solution in a way, but uh, so desperate. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, an author, he... Um, yeah, and he he had tried committing suicide through his whole life basically, and and I'm I'm not certain if he managed managed to do that a couple of years ago, but it's uh, um, it's it's not uh, something that I find easy to understand because he was such. Uh, had a lot of joy and also is a very uh, very creative being and uh, yeah a str strong individual strong personality uh, and um, but by all means the people are many layers so so there's uh, yeah But yeah, uh, for myself, I know I will not uh, uh, disappear by my own hand. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to finish with a more pleasant topic, mm. if I go home now, which wine should I drink? Oh, uh, well, if you wait a couple of weeks, then uh, then they will start to uh, put out uh, the trousseau. A grape uh, they uh, in so I would uh, I would definitely either go for something from Georgia or okay. but my definite favorite region in uh, is Jura in France oh yeah so uh, if you find a decent trousseau Courbet de Trousseau by Octavin would, would be the best choice ever Good. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome.